Welcome to Video Bites. I am Ethan Banks, and with me is Scott Brookshire, CTO and co-founder of Open Colo. Scott, welcome to Video Bites. Man, it's good to chat with you. And would you give us a quick rundown of what Open Colo does? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, Open Colo is a boutique data center located in the heart of Silicon Valley. Um, we are literally put in the place of the earth to provide amazing customer service and then hit our customer uh, experience demands for all the Silicon Valley startups and big businesses in the area. <laughs> Demanding clientele. Okay. <laughs> now, Scott, you guys had an opportunity <laughs> to, to, to build your own facility, which is a, a rare opportunity. But, uh, but I guess I could ask why. It's not like there's not data center facilities in Silicon Valley. Yeah. So in, in reality, like we were growing as a bare metal uh, hosting provider and we were just always struggling with just being a little, being able to have the freedom to build what we wanted to build. And if we wanted to cross connect from A to B or A to Z, uh, we always have to go through a process. Now we have a building, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> um, we also wanted to be able to represent and level up as a company um, and to be able to say, hey, we own the building, we own the ground, we own the network. You know, you are talking to everybody you need to talk to. Like we are the one location. You had an opportunity to stand up that network from scratch. So what what did you build? Well, first of all, what were your requirements for what you were building? Like with any network, like you're going to evolve over time and figure out how do you evolve without taking down the network. You got to like do it in, as you're running. Um, so with the new data center, because we spent a lot of energy and time and money to build it right, we wanted two end power design. We wanted very good redundancy. We wanted multiple paths, multiple everything. We wanted to apply that same that same requirement to the network. So we have two poor routers. We have incredible diversity of dark fiber coming in, multiple entrances, multiple KMZs, multiple providers. Like we're checking down the the check boxes of all that stuff. And then, you know, specifically for um refreshing the old, the old way of doing things uh to the new way we're doing things, is we were at the time we were looking for a, a switch vendor who could reinterpret maybe how to manage the network. You know, everyone says like, let's, let's be more um, automated. Let's create better tools. Like we're not going to use SNMP or our little ping tools and speed tests. Like we're going to, how do we do this right? Um, how do we provision things correctly? So we looked at a whole bunch of options and at, at the end of the day, we, we decided to go with uh, Nokia and they had SR Linux, um, SRL uh, switches, this came online and uh, we're like, this is perfect. I need it to just be, functional and to allow us to really think about how do we do automation? How do we then stream information out? Like, I don't want to do SNMP polls. Like, you know, I want to give me the data real time, like right now uh, and, and not be hitting with a, with a huge CPU load as well, because that, that's another, you know, kind of consequence to some of these tools out here. Um, and then deep, deep, deep diving that a little bit more. A lot of people are, when they're pushing configuration to into the network through an automation tool, um, they may be doing a set value, set, 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 or pushing this and then pushing this. Well, if you had a typo or a mistake in any of that, um, guess what? Everything worked except for those few mistakes. And is the network still working? Yeah, maybe. But now you have a you have something you didn't intend. So that's that's bad for us. So SR Linux, we use GNMI to kind of kind of do that. Okay, so SR Linux is the base. You've got the same operating system across your routers and your switches. You're communicating with all using a, a variety of tools. Uh, one of those tools you're going to show us here, it's a BGP provisioning tool that you guys built in-house. Yeah, so so if you can see my screen, like this is our BGP tool, and this is real-time production, um, so I won't really press go at the end of the day, but when we're interacting with trying to maybe provision a BGP uh, customer session, um, we're going to figure out who's, who's a customer name, what's their ASN, like where's their customer number in the system. And with these basic information fields, we're then going to connect to our source of truth and it's going to find that customer. It's going to find that customer's device ID number. And we might have some VLANs pre-provisioned in source of truth, or it will give us a, a, a dropdown of what's available. 
Now, does it does it matter for this conversation what your source of truth is? Uh, is it just a database of some sort, whatever it is? Um, this is actually our billing system, and it's probably not the easiest system to interact with. You know, there's way better source of truth tools out there. But this was the kind of the cool thing for us is with with SR Linux, we can kind of connect to whatever we want. There's no like vendor lock on, hey, we only support X, Y, Z. Like we're free to do what we want to do. So yeah, it, it was pretty amazing. So like for this, this little demo here, like let's say I want to do a 100 gig port, um, like right now you see port 25, but on this specific switch, port 25 is not 100 gig. Um, and I'll I'll see what my available 100 gig ports are. And again, real time behind the scenes, we're, we're querying um, the actual device and saying, well, show me what's 100 gig. Or if I switch back to 10 gig, um, like here's my my 10 gig. There's multiple sources you're hitting to populate this form, and you're doing that in real time. You've got the, the back-end source of truth that's giving you billing information about your client. You're talking to a switch in real time. It's showing you ports that are available for a given speed that you need. Yeah, because I, I, I would never trust. I mean, we want to trust source of truth, right? But every now and then, source of truth may be out of whack, or maybe there's a commit that's happening in real time. So we're going to double-check everything. So in this specific tool, while it looks like it's front-end only, it it's really behind the scenes hitting source of truth and querying in real time the the switch itself, and we can go into you know IP selection as well, and like we can pop, pre-populate it with whatever we selected for them originally, or if I get some other options, we can basically choose you know another another IP block from what's available, which is just tons of time savings um, for the network provisioning uh, person, but in this specific tool. The goal was to, and the goal is to basically push this to cells to use themselves, so they can have that conversation with the customer. And as the customer saying, "Hey, you know, here's some questions. I got your feedback from the questions. I'm going to provision this for you. Um, what's your AS number? You know, what are what do you need for BTP? Do you want a full table? You want a default? You know, what is it that you need? Um, we can basically pick those things out. But really, the salesperson who sold it to them, they can do that stuff. And we can level up our sales team to be more more empowered to actually do the complicated things that us network engineers are doing day in, day out. And then we can focus on the real stuff, like managing the network. So I'll show you like one of our like kind of Grafana dashboards. And obviously, I'm sure a lot of people have Grafana already. But the, the cool thing here, again, is we're streaming in real time whatever we submitted on that BGP form. So in this example, like before this call, like I went ahead and provisioned something obviously to get a, a, a alarm, but this one's the one that we just, we just did beforehand. Um, yeah. An active state in this case being, being bad. The BGP session is trying to, to get to the established point, but it's, but it can't, it's still actively trying to process and it's, it's stuck. Something's broken. And, yeah. In this case, like there's no cable to a cable, so there's no physical that's, fiber to this. That's broken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's going to be very broken for a while, but you know, the stuff that's not broken and this is again, real time. Um, like we, we can see like, Hey, there's a memory, there might be a memory issue with one of, uh, one of the, the systems out there or like, Hey, why we're at 90% if, my normal is 61 to something, 90% seems way off. Um, so we should investigate that. Um, and, and this goes along with like all our other tools. Um, and one of the other things we have with uh, Grafana is we, we kind of provision, um, we want to rapidly de to provision new devices or new switches into the environment. Um, so when we get a new switch um, from, from the vendor, it shows up on our loading dock, we, we unbox it, we we assemble all the parts. Um, we move it literally, and this is all like trying to do this like literally within the same day it arrives because usually we're always like running to to catch up on what was sold. Um, so we'll we'll grab we'll grab the switch, put it in the lab, and then we'll we'll plug it in for the first time. And we're never going to see you're never going to see this Grafana feedback from a switch out of the box. But what we do is we do the same thing we did on the provisioning tool. We use ZTP. And with with Python and um, some of the network uh, examples that Nokia provided with SR Linux, um, we're able to then connect to Source of Truth and then publish all of the session peering information, the loopback addresses, the the monitoring systems that it needs to communicate with, um, and then feedback like the status of all the hardware stuff. Because you know, when you're first turning something on, you really want to figure out like what's important. Do I see 
the three fans that are on? Yes, we do. Do we see both power supplies? Yes, we do. Do we see optical light level? Okay, yeah, that's that's obviously really important. And do we have a standard for our light levels? So um, this is, again, real time. So it, it went to bad to good. Um, and then we can see, you know, even even further than that, we can actually see the logs of the what's happening on the switch itself. So we can see, like, the, hey, there's someone trying to connect into this specific uh, switch. So, you know, this is all kind of the magic that we were able to accomplish uh, with SR Linux that we weren't able to do uh, with our previous vendor. And it's for me, it's nine day game changer um, just on how we're doing and managing our network at scale. I love that, that ZTP idea, zero touch provisioning. You, you stand that, you power it up the first time, it, it connects to the network, discovers what it needs to discover, and then it's you populate it with everything that it needs so you can rack it and get it in production ASAP. Yeah, we, yeah. We, yeah we don't really have like a, a second, we, we have a secondary step after it's physically racked in the data center, but there's no reason why we can't provision it with everything up to the specific customer uh, connections or the specific servers that are connecting to that whatever cloud where we got to do but you know fundamentally yeah like we got to know that this thing is is ready for production and once it's in production like we're going to walk away until we got to upgrade the firmware <laughs> and then even that's like not immature anymore because their releases are are, are pretty frequent and uh, we can decide if we want to upgrade to whatever that is. And for applications that we're looking to do for nice tooling, they give us an unmodified kernel. We can log into the actual Linux kernel, uh, a Linux file system and load an application. That's totally something different that I haven't seen with anybody else. Now we've been looking at Grafana, but I don't want to look at Grafana all day. As cool yeah. as it is, do, yeah. I mean, do you do I have to go into Grafana to get notify notifications? No, yeah, yeah. I mean like, yeah, so like obviously Grafana is great for like when you're want to look at something pretty. Um, but yeah, no one can, we have so many switches. So we use Slack for notification. Um, we, we have other systems that are going to like, you know, say, Hey, you know, server, whatever is, or switch, whatever is having an issue or Hey, BGP session went down, BGP session went up, whatever that was. Um, we, you know, we'll, we'll jump into that. And then what we've done too is from the notification perspective, also from the switch and tied into Grafana and other things is in our Slack notification, and I can't really show you our Slack, but um, we'll have the Slack, but we'll click into the link that will go into the necessary stuff that we want. You know, the perfect world is really, hey, there's a problem. Okay, great, there's a problem. This is a common problem. What can we do behind the scenes to to double check something and then send me another, another report or another alert? Because I don't wanna see, you know, a, a wall of alerts. I wanna see like actionable alerts what do I really care about? And then can we can we build some automation around certain alerts to try and grab some more information? So if a port goes down, oh shoot, or a BGP session went down, hey, do we have an optic problem? Do we have a port problem? What's the status of other things? So we can do all of that um, in, in legit real time or as fast as Slack can notify me. <laughs> One more question for you, Scott. Uh, Nokia, SR Linux community, you had to learn how to interact with all this stuff. Is there a good community built around this? There, yeah, so this is a, this is a mind, this is a game changer for us is for, for SRL, they have a, um, Discord channel and I'm on, I'm on that, um, quite a bit. Um, the PLMs that are designing the next cool features of SR Linux are also on this channel. And then there's all the customers of SRL that are also on there. And we're all like, we have this, you know, kind of virtual meetup and people, you know, post their questions. And, you know, if I can answer that, I'm happy to answer it. If a, a PLM wants to answer something, um, fantastic. And so we're just all working together um, in real time on that stuff. The other thing that's really neat um, is they they tied, they tied uh, the Discord in the Discord channel with uh, some open AI stuff. So we can basically... Um, um, ask AI, um, how do I set up like EVPN or how do I do X, Y, and Z? So now you're not really having to search online or a Google search. You're you're really gonna get the real data from the technical behind the scenes manuals uh, and documentation that Nokia provides. So it's all it's all on this Discord channel, which is pretty amazing. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, Scott, thank you very much for joining us on uh, Video Bites today. It was great to have you. Thanks. It was great. Thank you.